This episode of iFanboy is sponsored by GoDaddy.com. Use coupon code iFanboy to get 10% off all of your purchases. Get your own piece of the internet at GoDaddy.com. And by Netflix. Go to www.netflix.com slash iFanboy to get a two-week free trial. Netflix. Yay, movies. No, Connor, Connor, they gotta go in the back. No, we're arranging them this way. No, in the last show Forget we did the, the bag. Fa- <laughs> I like the bag. <laughs> iFanboy, the video podcast from the comic book discussion site iFanboy.com, where we discuss comic books. I am Josh. I'm here with... Ron. Connor. And for those of you who might have tuned in in our previous episode, you saw us talk about some books that... Um, Asterisk. Yes. That um, <laughs> Books that we thought that each others didn't like or hadn't read or should read or check or should out. Should check again. Should yeah. We picked them out of a bag. I was hoping to have the bag on this thing. Forget the bag. All right. Um, so now we've come back. We've taken our homework assignments. We've read, 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 and we're going to talk about it. So um, leading off for us, Connor Kilpatrick was assigned Strangers in Paradise yes. by Terry Moore. Yes. A lovely tale. I read the first three volumes. I had previously read the first two. The third one was new to me. What can I say about Strangers in Paradise? It <laughs> looks really good. <laughs> So it didn't grab you? like it, um, He is a fantastic cartoonist. Mm-hmm. I mean, I think the art even gets better by the time you, I oh, yeah. mean, as That's it goes easy. on. Yeah, yeah. Definitely. And it starts off great. I mean, it's, the one thing I, I really noticed about when I re- reread this was in the beginning, he's, he's really already talented and he just gets more and more talented. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. <laughs> so, so Josh and I thought that after reading the first two, where the first yeah. one was a little lighthearted, the second one was a little more serious, yeah. the third one went back to a little lighthearted, that it would grab you and you'd want more. It didn't grab me, but I didn't dislike it as much as I did the first time. Would, um, would you, would you, would you, <laughs> in five years, we'll have you read them again, and you'll, I, you'll be like, I'll give it a C plus. I liked it less. I I would read more. I don't feel the need to read more. Like if you if you gave me the rest of them, I would read them eventually. But I don't feel like I need to. There's a point where it switches over though, where he's like, I do need to know what happens. I don't feel like I need to, to read anymore. Yeah. So um, I just think probably because the three main characters, uh, Kachu, Francine, and David, I don't like any of them. <laughs> just as people? No, I don't. I can see that. Uh, so it's like, well, now why am I reading this? Because I don't like any of these people. Right. So um, You don't care, though, that what happens to them? You don't want them to be together? You don't well, to... they're already together in these yeah. books. Yeah. It's pretty clear they're together. So it's like, well, what's the big mystery? Where's the third book lead off? End, end off? Um, the, they, they basically, uh, they're in Hawaii. Francine and Kachu. Francine goes to see the marriage of her mm-hmm. her awful ex boyfriend, and then they fo- David and Kachu follow her out there, and then that's where it ends. They're on they're in Hawaii together, hmm. yeah. hand in hand on the beach. They're together. I don't so know what's, what's the big mystery. Happy. They get ripped apart, and they get back together, and then they get ripped apart, yeah, and then they jump fantastic. to the future, then they go back to the past, <laughs> and then they get ripped apart. And then there's Molly and Pooh. So the question is 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 the whole thing? I remember when it, when it ended, the whole thing was how great was their falling together, but they're they're already, they're already together. They, they get ripped apart. <laughs> and then they get rid of the bar. It kind of keeps going in that cycle. Yeah. It's good, though. Will they or won't they? You know, we'll they keep, already we'll, have. We'll keep you reading. They already kissed in the book. We'll keep you reading it. It's not like they had their first kiss. They kissed already. All right, so I'll get And David's a doormat. Yeah, I'll get number four. And Francine's a doormat. Yeah. Well, there's reasons for that. Don't you want to know where David comes from? <laughs> he comes from the crime family. The, 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 some of the crime stuff that, that goes on, the, I didn't mind the conspiracy the stuff. stuff, that stuff comes in again, and like there's a whole thing with the president, presidential election and mm. stuff like that, the Parker girls. Well, I think the, the like thing that. is, like, all right, Kachu is angry. I know why. It makes sense why she's angry. I still don't want to be around her. Francine is a doormat. I don't want to be around a doormat. I don't like doormats. Yeah. David is David's David's even worse, yeah. worse of a doormat. Well, I want to kick David in the balls, tell him to <laughs> grow something, you know, like... It's hard to be around them. You want to know about David's past? He's a cold I player. don't really want to. Yeah, the Tin Man just did operation cold was cold not man. successful. I want to pick David it? up and smack him around and well, say, No, but I think it's a away. success because he said he'd read it again. So we'll give you, I would you read it again. It. We'll give you the fourth one and then we'll keep and it. I, and I like the third one more than I did the first two. Yeah. So okay. excellent. All right, cool. Um, I guess you're up next. I am up next. Uh, the next thing that came out of the bag was uh, The Exterminators, which I am a champion of. Uh, by uh, Simon Oliver and uh, Tony, Tony Moore. Moore still on this one. Yeah, Tony Moore's on this one. Um, I actually um, I didn't I dismissed this previously because it's Vertigo and I tend not to like Vertigo and I also don't like and the, horror the, the icky, and horror and icky bugs. It's not a horror book. All I have to say bugs is, are horrible. It's all horror I, is in the word. Him. 
All I have to say mm -hmm. is screw you for making me read this goddamn fantastic book. <laughs> yes! <laughs> I just like, blew out the audio because I'm so excited. <laughs> like now I got another goddamn book to read. <laughs> Did you like it? It blew me away. Oh. So because here's the thing, here's the thing is that it wasn't vertigo, <laughs> mystical, fairy thing. It was is very it? real. It was very percent realism. The mystical. bugs weren't that buggy, right. weren't that bad, and it's really freaking smart. Like it's really intelligent, and yeah. like, and like, I know we talked in the last show we talked about how there's like literary prostitutes, yeah. and like they set up role plays of, of, from you know fiction. That's just like the tip of the iceberg. Yeah, yeah. The literary references in here, and like the pop culture references and stuff like that. Like this Simon Oliver guy is a great writer. Yeah, and um, I was looking from all over San Diego, so I wanted to talk to him, and I never found him. And I read volume one, I read volume two, and then I went and bought volume three. Nice. So I'm um, um, this success. Nice. I, I would think yeah. that after, by this point you would understand that vertical doesn't. Mean fairies and I know anymore. that, but I gotta because every time we show you a book, you love it. I gotta draw the line somewhere. Yeah, that's the that's the that's the tough thing. Well, know, that's so. cool. That's I'm, cool. I'm glad I didn't. I would like to no, sign that. It was of Strangers in Paradise. Yeah, it was um, to Tony Moore's art. I, I, I like it less when it's not Tony Moore. The volume three had yeah, a lot yeah. less Tony Moore. Tony Moore's art, the bugs, the way the tidal wave of cockroaches, yeah. and like the characterization, and like you really like the the um, the main character whose name I forget. Um, oh, Henry James, yeah. the the main character. Like I really. I want to know what happens to him. Yeah, like it's Con, it completely so, complete. And what I why I even liked it even more is it's written for issues, and that's by reading it in trades. I realized that I know a lot of time we talk about books are written for mm -hmm. trades and stuff like that. Each issue, each chapter ended definitively, and the next one picked up with yep. kind of a recap. And like I want to catch up and start buying this in issues because that it's like one that's really writing a comic book the yeah, way that's a comic what I'm doing now. now. Yeah. yeah uh, unfortunately, Tony Moore goes away for a little while, so he can do Fear Agent, right. which is pretty good. Also, I to take Fear Agent. Uh, so. Derek Robertson's been filling in a little bit, which is not so bad. Uh, Ty Ty Templeton. Yeah, Ty Templeton. Yeah, yeah. great artist is yeah. one of the other filling guys. So. so cool. Excellent. Good. All right. That's so good. Josh. So then Josh had um, Josh the, was assigned the, Casanova. Right. For Matt Fraction. This Gabriel one. Image ba. Comics. Gabriel Ba. Um, Why did you not? Not read it originally. I did read it originally. I read it, bought the first issue. Right. I read one issue. It yeah. came out. Yeah. I read the first one. Um, it was a little too hipstery for me, I no. thought. It was trying really hard to be cool. It was like the guy who comes to school and his clothes are a little too thought out. Right. You know, he's got leather wristbands yeah. and, and his shoes are like bowling shoes. Um, who, puts, who puts a lot of thought in their clothes here? Yeah, I wonder. Hmm. <laughs> but it's effortlessly. effortlessly. Oh, it's effortlessly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right, so oh, what are you gonna so on? when you went beyond the first issue and read the whole, this is the first, I think, six or seven mm -hmm. in the in this hardcover? I hated it. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely just, I don't, I, it was exact, it never changed from yeah. what my initial impression was. Yeah. And you told me the end was, and I don't know what you're talking about, because uh, I don't know what happened. What did he say about the end? He said it was good. I, what, what I thought was that was that it started off the same way, very confusing. I got the hipster kind of postmodern kind of look how cool this is type type, type thing. It's Richard um, Ashcroft running yeah. around. I don't. Um, but what I thought was that as the as the as this book progressed, we got in, I I felt. I understood what, who the characters were, what the game was, mm -hmm. and then introduced this plot of pitting Casanova against his father and his sister and like the kind of the family dynamic and the spy dynamic and who knows what and what's going on and then it's once they introduced Casanova's mother and it became a play of protecting his mother that's what kind of grabbed me it was it wasn't until like the second or, th or, or last issue second to last or last mm -hmm. issue where I was like okay yeah I'm in you know I didn't so. I, I I tried but mm -hmm. and, I, and I read it was actually it was really hard for me to get through because a, a lot of what it was was it felt like it was like a a slapsticky take on on 60s shield comics and yeah. I was like Need. Yeah, this, kind of this is, is a comment yeah. I don't need to explore, I yeah. suppose. But for a buck ninety nine? No, sure. I didn't enjoy it at all. <laughs> what I, about Gabriel Ba? Great artist. Yeah. Uh, I would not I yeah, I'd like to see some of the, I really don't like I hate the main character. Yeah, I hate like, his. I do. Like, I do problem. hate his hair. It's right. a problem hair, when yeah. you don't. You no. can't relate to the main protagonist. No, I hate. Yeah, I, yeah. Yeah. I mean, well, I, there's. I guess there's there's some sort of skill there, but it, it's not a book for me. Yeah, interesting. Um, I want to say people who like Twin Peaks might like that, but you've never actually seen Twin Peaks, so. But I don't think you like Twin Peaks. I don't like Twin Peaks. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So anyway, anyway, no less. All right, so. Um, Is there a midget in here? There, I think there's a big blobby thing. Anyway, uh, yeah. um, so Connor, um, yeah. after Str it's funny how we challenge our preconceived notions. Connor not only had to deal with Strange Paradise, but we also had to read Stylish Vittles. Yes. Which we thought you would like by Tyler Page, which we thought you would like because it was um, harkened back to the days of in college. It well, college I just, romance. Yeah. As I said in the last show, the only reason I didn't read this book was because I hate the word vittles. <laughs> and I told you if you taped over the, the title, I would have wholeheartedly You're been into it. Irrationally, with Mike. Absolutely irrationally. Okay. Yep. I really like this. Um, mm -hmm. 
it's a little, I mean, it's, I, I, it's, it's his first real work. I bet you didn't know there was a book about me. <laughs> well, the guy looks just a little like Josh. Yeah, he does. And yeah, he wears yeah. a Green Lantern t-shirt. Yeah, he does. Yeah, actually. And I had a Volkswagen Rabbit. And it drives a Volkswagen Rabbit. Actually, yeah, I forgot. It is It's kind of freaky. Yeah. Um, <laughs> first time I read it, I was like, hopefully you weren't this wimpy in college. Uh, I may have been. Yeah, he was. Uh, okay, then it is Josh. <laughs> um, you know, this is this is basically he went to college the year we went to co graduated the same year we yeah, did. Yeah, it seems so to be a very parallel. It's path. very much. Uh, it's basically all about him in college and meeting a girl. Mm -hmm. It's called I Met a Girl. And, uh, <laughs> uh, very simple. So he he really does get the college mindset, the dialogue. Like it was all very familiar, and that, in that sense, it was very uneasy at times. But also, like in the same problem I had with with like David was like he was so frustrating to read because he just wanted to be like man up. That, that to me is the, it's the Kevin Arnold syndrome. Like yeah. when you would watch yeah. Kevin Arnold and you would be like, just say it, say the thing that, yeah. that, that, that the narrator's saying, and he yeah. doesn't, which is. Oh, but that ending of that show, the one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, right. Not, oh. the um, not the point. But uh, it was God, very good, was... And, and this is a trilogy, so I'm now looking forward to reading the next two. Okay. I really like this. I'm going to read more of it. I really like. I've seen his art has grown a lot gonna... since he started because well, it was you, very. You can. There's a, he's doing a new series now, also about people in college, but he's focusing on two girls instead called Nothing Better. Right. Yes, uh, which has and, been great. And so you far. can read that for free on the web, yeah. or you can. But buy like you can see, like the web. his art grows and changes throughout the course of this. But I mean, there's a couple of really incredibly rendered pages in here, and. He, he does the things with like like where he'll back up slowly over pages. Yeah, yeah. It, it really like. He, I, what I like about him is I feel as if he's really um, not only writing a good story, but he's flexing his art, his yep. art style, not style, but art, art execution through the story. So you actually see a progression of him as a storyteller, which is pretty. Yeah, cool, and so. I mean I enjoyed it. I um, it was interesting. I mean, there's like, everyone's got that girl in college where you have like the stupid. You get you, you it's all great until you have the one argument and then it's all weird and then yeah. and this then you is, think it's the end because you've had one argument. And, yeah. This is one of those rare books that I picked up from Indie Alley, like based on I looked at it. And I was like, I think I would like that. We we were together. Yeah. We, we, I remember we were walking we were walking along um, walking along the San Diego Con, and it was the red tables. It wasn't Artist yeah. Alley. It was the small press area. Right. And I remember we both we were both like, what's that? And we like went over like a <laughs> yeah. magnet. And we're like, how much is this? Like, and like just by looking yeah, at it. They don't ever do that yeah, because yeah. It's, you never know if it's going to be yeah, any good. Exactly. But, but like pages like like this one are just fantastically. Yeah. I mean, yeah. he's he's a really good artist. Um, cool. But I'll I'll read more of that definitely. So that's in the good pile. I've made the bad, the medium, the good. All right. so, um, so I feel like I'm, I'm going to strike out with Josh left and right. So we're going to try. <laughs> Josh's next selection was Kane from Paul Griss. Which we previously tried, I tried to get you to read. Yeah. And it, and, well, he and, did. He read the first two. Yes. And he didn't like it, didn't get it. And I thought maybe you weren't mature enough to enjoy it as a comic yeah. reader. So I think you were drunk. <laughs> <laughs> what is wrong with Kane? It's not good. Ah. <sighs> It's not, there's, there's, I, I, I hate saying this because yeah. it's a self-published work of love and everything. Yeah. But it's not good. Like, there's nothing compelling about any of this. There's mm. nothing original. There was nothing that made me want to keep turning the page. It was like an attempt at doing American crime, but there, it was so, like. <sighs> See, I wonder, I wonder because you don't, Ron, you don't. <laughs> You don't weird. watch a lot of crime television. I do television, not watch a lot of crime television. Whereas Josh and I watch a lot of police shows yeah. and good ones. So I wonder if this is just like it it's was, not good because we, we it, watch like well, you, you can watch The Wire or Homicide. And well, the thing is that I don't I but I don't agree with you that this is like that. I mean because it's but you don't watch them. So but no, I don't. I know I don't. I've seen. I mean, but, I've seen. I mean, is that a valid? I mean, that's just what I'm thinking well, now. Yeah, I mean, it's just not deep enough. There's nothing. Yeah, it's not telling in the plot that makes me want to know what happens next because mm -hmm. they're very simple. The main character I don't know anything about. There's no backstory. There's well, no, it not, evolves over the series. I mean, that's just kind of. Yeah, but yeah. like, it, I mean, this is how this this whole story. I should know something about. I should want to know more. But like. All I know about him is that he's grim. He smacks from the top ten, but without being interesting at all. Yeah. Or a big blue superhero, which would maybe make it better. Right. The other thing is that um, the lettering was really confusing. Yeah. It wasn't well done. I got confused a lot. It was leading me in the wrong place. Oh, fascinating. Um, and that happened frequently. Yeah. Um, you know, the, Did you have a problem? Is this, this is the one where it flashes forward and backwards between time? I didn't time? have a problem with that this time. This time? Okay. I was pretty clear on what was happening when. I think that's that evolution. Actually. Yeah. Um, well, that might I mean, because the thing is, Paul Grist is British. And so, so like, there's a bit of that British kind of, not want to say wackiness, that's not the right word, but... But I love that. Yeah, right, yeah, that, I, yeah so. Normally. Yeah. Uh, the, other, the other bit of this being that, um, 
I lost my train of thought. Well, anyway, I, I think it's safe to say that if you don't like Kane, you should definitely never touch Jack Staff, his other book. <laughs> I tried. Because that makes no sense. Like, and I like yeah. it, and that makes no sense. I'm disappointed because it, uh, in, in, the, in the full, this is up to like volume seven or what now, mm -hmm. it's been one of my fav favorite books that I kind of discovered in a black and white kind of indie kind of feeling. And it really kind of grabbed me and gripped me because I thought it was telling a, a police kind of story in a way that's not procedural in the way that I that bores oh, I me or or in a way that was you know overly cliche you know it I is thought, overly cliche no, <laughs> every device in this the crime yeah. boss the yeah. cops the the partner I mean this is powers but without any personality to it yeah or yeah. powers but I found person but for some reason I found personality I don't know the, the, yeah. the other thing I was yeah. gonna say is that it's a it's a British um, creator and I don't know if this is supposed to be American or British. I don't have any idea from the voice. I don't the think either. I think no, it, it matters because yeah. I need to know if I have context for this stuff. It matters. Yeah. It's got to be American if there's guns. I think. In which case, then, oh, like, there was a, a lot of problems because there would be stuff in here where they would use British uh, colloquialism and things like yeah. that, and it throws me off, and I don't know where I am, and so yeah. I don't know. I think I think you think too much. No, I, I agree with him. I read it. I read it first, and it wasn't. It's not good. And I really tried to give him a chance. I went in, yeah. I, but no. We hit Ron with a vertigo stick. We hit yeah. him hard. I got hit hard. Uh, <laughs> Transmetropolitan, ironically, I'd never read before by Warren Ellis and Derek Robertson. I kind of dismissed it with all the things, and um, it was vertigo. Got right, yeah, some fairies. Exactly. How were the fairies in it? Uh, <laughs> um, and I kind of, I kind of um, poo pooed it because also because the you know the, it um, gets often compared. The main character Spider Drizzle gets compared to like a Hunter S. Thompson type, and I'm not really a big fan of Hunter S. Thompson and all that kind of stuff. Me neither. But, um, but goddamn, this is good. <laughs> Again, also, I mean, and, so, and I've been, I've been, I'm up to like volume six or seven of this as well, just reading. Um, it, it was I, me a couple. I, I dismissed it for irrational reasons, yeah. similar to Silas Middles. Well, Middles. And it was actually, it's a, it's a good, you know, in the future, just by a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, so there's enough um, connection to our present day to make it believable. So it's not totally out there. Every now and then, I think it does go overboard with that kind of I concept. Agree. You know, like the you know and well, it's a long and it's yeah. a series that long. Occasionally, he's going to go off in, in yeah. wrong directions. But um, and I don't really like politics. That's another thing. Is I really don't like politics. I just and and this and it got political. It got very political with the presidential election and stuff like that. And how Spider Jerusalem manipulates and and how the journalism plays a role in the in the election, which knowing I don't like politics going into it, I was like, oh, but then it wasn't that bad. Like it, it well, was. It wasn't. It wasn't. Uh, it wasn't an allegory to a real life thing. No, it was just. It was actually their politics like of their time. Yeah, that, that yeah. wasn't like supposed to be George Bush or yeah. Bill Clinton. It was yeah. just the the bad politician of yeah. their time. Um, probably the best thing about this was Derek Robertson's art. It was just, yes. it was just it blew me away. I mean, every. I mean, like I found myself looking at pages, uh, like just staring longing. Which and, yeah. and I I want to I want to. This is to me his best work ever, and yep. I think yeah. some of that credit needs to go to Rodney Ramos. The anchor on that stuff who yeah. keeps uh, who kept it all really tight and clean uh, right. and beautiful. Right. I love that. Book. Yeah, a, so, a, that's a classic. So I get it. I see it. You're all right. Um, <laughs> All right, so my last ditch effort with you guys was X Men First Class. We by both Jeff, read this. Jeff yes. Parker and um, and Roger Cruz, I believe. You go yeah. first. I really enjoyed this. I liked it a lot. Um, see, I always like this X Men team. It's and it's just uh, the and it's, it's the first class, so it's the original X Men, uh, but it's also but it's in the modern it's in the modern world. They've got email and you know it's, it's it's yeah, it's kind of like a it's almost like a uh, Untold Tales of Spider Man. Yeah, it's but, Scott but, and it's it's Bobby, you know it's it's, it's yeah. Warren, it's all the guys. Um, it's the Silver it's hair, hair Free Beast, which I love. Yeah. Um, What's his power? He's, he's strong and super, agile. Super strong. Yeah. He's like a <laughs> he's and he's very it. smart. Yeah. It's like a big monkey. Um, what I liked about this was, first of all, it's like an all ages book, but you can you can seriously enjoy it as an adult. But I bet you a kid would also really enjoy it. So yeah. it's the kind of thing where people ask, what what can I give to young readers? You can definitely give them this because it's the X Men and it's it's exciting. That was exactly what I thought about it. This yeah. is what Ultimate X Men probably should have been. Yeah, you could give that absolutely. Book. That's I had the same thought. This yeah. was, you, this you was, could give this book to any twelve year old and not feel bad about it, and you're not insulting them. And it's no, absolutely, it's, it's safe. You know, yep. supposedly. This is Ultimate X Men without the need to put in Wolverine and make mm -hmm. it all super hip. This yep. is like basics, a lot of fun. This, this is the, the X Men I don't get to read with these guys learning to be the heroes and it's it's superhero based <laughs> and it's the training based. It's yep. the idea of inexperience. They make mistakes mm -hmm. and um, it's really funny too. Yeah, yeah. I thought it was really funny. Yeah. Um, the art is great. Yeah, um, absolutely. I really enjoyed this. I had like a lot. Of, it's just like mm -hmm. I re remember reading, going, "This is fun." Like this is just fun to read. I like there was all single issue stories. Uh, Thor shows up. Doctor Strange I shows up. The Marvel Universe. I love that it pulled in the Marvel Universe. Yep. Yeah. When Thor, when when uh, Donald Blake showed up, <laughs> that's Thor. They don't know it yet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, like th that's the thing. It's like uh, it's good. You know, you can hand this to a kid; they can enjoy it because they know the X Men want to do. But you can also hand it to somebody like us who knows the Marvel mm -hmm. universe and gets excited about those kind of yeah. things. The only thing I didn't kind of like was Cyclops. No, 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 no. <laughs> I thought most of it was good characterization, of Cyclops, but he was too. Every time he shot his powers off, he would cry about that he hurt anybody. Oh yeah, but that was that, that was that's accurate though. I know, but that's it's like that's all he talked about whenever he shot his powers. Yeah, no, but he hates weak people. I know he really does. If but anybody that, who isn't completely 100 percent self assured, then they're, they're of, no waste of his time. Of the original X Men, it's probably like Cyclops. But he's a, but he's great in it. Otherwise, I think yeah. he's they really they loosen him up. He's he, he's a little bit funny. He's not always. Yeah. They joke about how he's the stodgy leader, but then he's off like with with Marvel Girl on the well, beach. You can understand you know? why Jean Grey would like him, whereas yeah. a lot of other stories you're kind of like, what are you doing with that guy? Right. Yeah. So um, hey, I'm glad you liked it. I really enjoyed that. I yeah. might actually look. Is this? That's not. It's ongoing. It's, it's ongoing. ongoing. No, volume two yeah. is an ongoing. Yeah. yeah. And I probably so, and, will... and volume two has been really really good. No, let's not put this in the good pile. Okay. Yeah. yeah. No, I'm gonna start probably buying this. Awesome. Yeah. Yay. Um. Dumb. Uh, dumb. I, <laughs> also, I didn't think you would. But I, I, just I, never, I think it was good. I don't think it was necessarily for me. Right. Uh, like the things. That so we like talked this. About. This fills my X Men. I have. I find I have an X Men need. Yeah. Uh -huh. And I feel like and the regular books aren't filling it because it's too. I found myself reading this, going, you know, I wish the regular books were like this. Well, They're this too far inside their own heads. This is what X Men can't be anymore because of its. An ultimate, trailer yeah, mind. exactly. Yeah. Ultimate X Men is too, it's too much. It's it's, it's ultimate X Men. It's fun, but too much. Yeah. But this is the X Men I'm I'm looking to read, and if and this also made me want to reboot the whole universe and get back. Everything should be back. Come on, you're on a full scale. You want to just do away with it all now. Yeah. I want to wreck havoc. Um, <laughs> so the last the big mama. The last book in our uh, in our um, in our pile, which is becoming the eternal I fanboy cocktease, um, <laughs> is um, Sandman. Um, and the origin of this was that Josh has read all of Sandman uh -huh. and has become the de facto um, supporter of Sandman at iFanboy, even though you don't love it. You know? I, it's, it's, yeah. I, I really like it. I think it's fantastic. I think it's really important. It's not my favorite story. I, I don't have a t-shirt. But I, we like building it up within you. Guys. I know, but like, I have yeah. to be the guy who, who defends so, it. Right. I've made fun of Sandman since 1994. Um, as being like, oh, God, the cure, blah, This blah, is blah. the book that's kept you from reading these books. Yeah, exactly. This is the book that has ruined me for Vertigo. So um, we talked about it on our audio show. I promised I would read it. I've been reading, there are 10 volumes of this. Yep. I have been, I have, I have completed them all, but we decided that you're going to read them as well. All right, so and now we're going to do an entire show dedicated to Sandman. Mm -hmm. So, bum, 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 to be continued. Um, we're gonna do an entire show, Sam, to talk about it. I've read it all. I've got. I'm formulating my opinions. I know. I know what he thinks too. <laughs> yes. So um, I don't want to tell you, but I can't. Yeah. So um, Sam wasn't far off base. That's all. Eventually, saying. people are gonna get angry. Like, we have to do the show soon. Yeah. <laughs> I know. No, it's gonna come in our. Um, we're, it's gonna be done in, within within the month or so um, ish. Don't give him the time. Don't yeah. commit. It's gonna be done eventually. Oh wait. So look for no <laughs> <laughs> August. So um, if you disagree with us, if you have a reason why one of these books are good or bad or whatever, you can email us at contact that I fanboy. Let us know. We love to hear from you. Or you could uh, call the voicemail line, which is eight 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 fanboys, which is three two six two three two six two six nine seven. Or you can go to ifanboy.com, which there'll be a thread on this. You can talk about these books or other books you think people should try. Also, at revision3.com, there's a discussion forum area where we've got our own forums. You can start your own discussions. And I don't want to hear it from the Strangers in Paradise readers because I hear it enough from these two guys. I don't <laughs> read it anymore. Does. And I like it. I just didn't love it. You'll, we'll keep you reading it. I'll but seriously, reading it, yeah. you can talk to me about the other books, not these, not these books. <laughs> no. Every day, every single email. day from these guys. Why am I the big crabby guy? Doesn't like You're the big crabby guy doesn't like anything. I'm yeah. a snob. Because, yeah. <laughs> They're both indie books. It's not like it's not like I was like I don't like it because it's the Hulk. It's not that. They're indie books. They're shitty indie books, people. I really like this. <laughs> All right, so you're doing the open, mm -hmm. and then I'll do the lead in, and then yep, okay, we'll so. get going. Okay. Let's try not to offend anyone too much. All right. I'm leading off, so that's gonna be fun. And now, playing first base, <laughs> Connor. I'm pulling Kill no Patrick. punches. Five seconds. Pinch hitting. I'm going to cut. Minosa. Matt Fraction three. is never going to talk to us again. <laughs> All right. Let's start it in three, two, one.